Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. This is Fishman Log number 120, and I'm going to start off with these guys today because, well, they're new. I went to a few pet shops, um, had a look around, trying to buy some fish to put in some of my clients' tanks uh, while I wait for a lot of the fish that I'm growing out to get big enough to go in them. And of all the places I went and all the tanks I looked at, these were the only ones that caught my eye. They're lovely little angels. Uh, they have well, they're perky, they have proper finage, uh, they have all the right kind of characteristics I want, and they do also fit in with some of my future plans, which is to uh, breed more angelfish. I find they suit really well with a lot of my clients. They like having uh, well, the look of them, and of course they're not too aggressive and seem to fit in very well with everything I want to uh, set up for them. To that end, I am taking some of my well, DIY builds for filters. This is the one I had put together for testing to see if I can have a chamber of, well, it started off with Java Moss. I also tried uh, Hornwort. And it just, when they're in the, a chamber like this, they don't seem to just, they don't do well. So I've given up on that and I'm converting it now just to a standard box filter. It's got a fair amount more sponge than usual. Uh, but also has a gravel and everything. I'm going to put this in one of my aquariums and get it uh, up and running, get it you know acclimated. As you can see, I didn't quite clean it properly, but uh, not even remotely important because eh, it's a filter. It's going to get even more dirty. So that's the simple matter of taking this and sticking it in one of the tanks. And I'm going to put it in the one that has the, uh, the bog filter on the top still that I haven't changed over yet and leave it in there for a couple of weeks and then I'm going to uh, put it into use for an aquarium. So it's going to set in here and I also pulled out a couple of other filters I had. I had one filter, it was a box filter sitting in idle in the young goldfish tank. I pulled that out and I've stuck that in with the Placostomus because as I mentioned last week, the Placostomus uh, have stopped breeding, which usually means there's either too many males or the dominant male is getting too old, uh, one or the other. So I want to divide that tank up, so I need these filters up and running. Uh, so I put one in here, that's this one right in front, and as you can see, the tank is fine, it just stays relatively cloudy because, well, I feed my plecos an awful lot, as you can tell by that fat belly right there. Uh, so yeah, this is going to sit in here again for a little while, and then I'm going to take all the Corbenzas, which are in the tank to the left, out, uh, set that up, divide this between, uh, like, put in at least one male, a few females into each of these setups, and then one of them I'm going to use as um, probably Zebra Daniel rearing, and one as... Uh, Leopard Daniel, so that will give me lots of grow at space. So that was the tank where that filter came from. So these are the adult, the two adult uh, goldfish, and those are the three left uh, babies of there as well. They're quite large now. They're getting along really nicely. It's a nice little school of fish in here. I'm very happy with them. At some point, I do need to decide whether I want to breed more goldfish. Uh, I don't have a lot of call for them, and unfortunately, when they breed... Uh, <laughs> Well, they breed. They, they, they end up with an awful lot of offspring, so I, I have to figure that out. This is what's left of the pond. Sad as it is, I wanted to show it to you one more time because it finally got cool enough. Last night it was, uh, well, they're calling for a frost warning, so it was getting down pretty close to freezing. And I wanted to see if there was anything left alive in here after this, and believe it or not, well, two things are. The snails are doing fine. And the scuds, well, again, because they're native, so it's not a big deal. The shrimp have all now passed away. Uh, it was down to about 2 degrees Celsius in there, so uh, it was definitely too cold for them. So this is the stuff I pulled out. The babies are getting uh, a lot bigger now. I am going to take all the adults out of here. I still haven't done that. They're in the back somewhere. Uh, I'm going to pull them out because I don't really care for, uh, well, their structures, their not quite up to uh, what I want for breeding quality. But for the moment, they are in here keeping this tank going. As you can see, there's also a ton of shrimp and the plants and everything else. I'm just going to leave it in there here for now. Unfortunately, you guys, there was not enough interest for me taking that uh, pond indoors and having it as an uh, indoor tub. And because it would take up a lot of space, I decided I'm just going to empty it and leave it out there. And then set up again uh, next summer. 
This tank is the one with a hornwort and a bunch of, well, just mostly you know, shrimp and a few scuds, and uh, it's just not doing as well yet. It will take off, it'll be fine, and then I'll decide what I'm going to put in there full time, because there's only like two or three baby uh, guppies in there, so it's obviously not uh, a very good use of space. This is the killifish tank, and the only reason to show it to you is because, well, I think they're really lovely fish, and they're doing, as you can see, some of them here, especially this male, uh, the color is just coming up really nicely, and again, I'll have to figure out for going forward, because they're not very long-lived fish, uh, about two years, and I'm going to need to set up uh, you know, additional breeding colonies, so I'll have to keep an eye on that. I want to show you these. Uh, this tank needs to be pruned back quite a bit. As you can see, uh, the cryptocrine is just taking over, and so is the subwasser tank. I need to prune this down a little bit, and I, even though there are uh, two male guppies in here that I really like the color of, the color pattern and everything, I do need to obviously set that up for more breeding. Uh, again, actually I'll just tell you this for this next whole clip, uh, I need to do a bunch of pruning. As you can see, everything just grows uh, quite quickly, and it is one of the things I tend to be a little lax on. I don't uh, prune as much as I should. So this is, again, uh, well, you know, it's the zebra daniels. They're growing up quite nicely. There's a few in there that are going to be culls, uh, but I'm going to put them down into the new tank uh, once there's a bit more space, let them grow up a little bit more, and then I'll pull some out. I'm going to try and focus on a specific male guppy here in a second, and the reason for it is I'm definitely going to be breeding him because I really like the color pattern. There he is right there. Uh, is a lovely little fish, and I'm going to let him grow a little bit more, and then he's also going to get in a tank with some females and some uh, young fish, and he will hopefully do the uh, guppies always do. Uh, the guppies in this tank, uh, there's one or two I'm going to keep. Uh, the rest are all going to go to clients' tanks. Uh, this particular color form or group just doesn't do it. It's just not what I want, so it is going to, uh, well, get culled and put it in tanks. Remember, from quite some time ago now, I did a little experiment where I took some epoxy, roughed up some, in this case, PVC, uh, glued a rock on, and I noticed when I was doing a bit of cleaning that that one had just popped off by itself. So uh, PVC with this is just not a good idea. And this is the acrylic with the rock and the epoxy, and it is very strongly adhered to the acrylic, but not to the rock. But that's not a problem because those are polished stones and it's just something to keep in mind though going forward. I will need to uh, definitely use something that has a bit more rough shape to it. So I'm going to end up here with the pond of course because it is doing very well obviously. It does need to be pruned and it does uh, even the plants in the back they need to be rearranged. Uh, one of them is not thriving uh, it's one of the canes, and I'm going to pull that out and put something else in. Obviously, the, uh, <laughs> the lilies are very uh, hardy and doing very, very well. And so are the ferns and everything else. So I think I'll try something else in there. So that's pretty much it for today. Uh, again, uh, thank you very much for watching. There's going to be a bit of a clip now for the barrel down below. I've decided to net them all out. I want to pull them up because they're not breeding down here or they probably are, I should say, but they're not you know, producing any offspring. So I want to have a look at them. There's a couple of females and a couple of males in there that looked really cool. And of course, you know, as time goes on, more will just come down here anyway. So uh, I want to pull them out and have a look. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, leave comments. Let me know what you think about all this. I'll see you in the next video and bye for now.